message to the collective this is divine uh divine um has a message for the collective and a big thank you to high priestess tarot and um uh spiritual what is it called anyway there's there's a several of you that i need to thank and i'm sorry the names are <clears throat> um not on my uh mind exactly but uh there's several that have been reading my energy um my exact scenario which has been resonating very um truthfully it's exhausting the um crisis situation that you know we're trying to help uh, avert i'm a peaceful human being i don't go after people unless they come after me type energy so in my situation i do have a doppelganger his name is uh, john gabriel Sproul. uh he married my ex-wife he is uh considered my cousin i guess uh, we look very similar and the situation is yes they stole an inheritance of mine uh along with my own mother <laughs> um they're all under investigation they know it um and they're fearless and in, in doing what they do they they simply want to continue until they get um actually brought down i don't know about uh why the police have not involved themselves yet um they uh know that john john's little girl is uh being used for sex trafficking and uh it is sad um there is uh he has two little girls i don't know about the younger i do know about the older it is for sure that that has been happening um of course it's nothing to do with me so i i can't really describe exactly the scenario but i have pretty fluid ideas unfortunately i'm very um uh clairvoyant in this in a way of attaching myself to seeing right through how they think and how they operate I was predicated upon as a kid a lot of us in the collective had backgrounds that are very similar in that way I understand the mind of the sociopath and the psychopath very well um, I'm a loving human being and I'm an empath and I was raised by a sociopath mom for 12 years of my life she boogied out thankfully uh, the energy got out of the house but the damage was done um, you know, my grandma, uh, who lived next door, was born in 1900, and she was my female person that I could come to um, up until age 12 when she passed, and her spirit and energy are missed um, on the planet, but they come through clairvoyantly all, the, all day long, and she is my angel, um, and my dad's uh, there with her. And my uncle Mark, who's her son, who just passed in April of, I want to say like 2019, um, he was 94 and my best friend. So I have quite the story. I have uh, quite a legacy that I have to live up, up to. I'm the only one that they can rely on to be as intelligent as I am and discerning as I am. I, I do have a blood brother who's a good person, I, I believe, and, and should... Uh, uh, be thought of as such he, he he tends to want to do good however he cannot allow himself to speak um as a backup to my voice um he's told himself that his ego and pride and his um character and his integrity um are definitively higher than the situation if you will and has even accused me of being mentally ill for knowing that my uh, cousin and uh, ex-wife and my mom are involved in a murder for hire plot against me um it's sad for sure it uh, actually makes sense if you look at it from a psychopath perspective um they i've known my whole life that i'm adopted um since probably age four or five uh, spirit told me that and i knew it internally and was always questioning how i looked um if you look at my blood brother he doesn't look like our dad either um, we have a, dis, uh, a known acquaintance who is in the billionaire class, who is, uh, shares the same last name as my mother's maiden name. And I won't get into that specifics um, because 
uh, his wealth is the largest wealth known in the uh, United States. And his name is uh, the largest name known in the United States for having that kind of fortune and control over our society um, via his uh, interests. I'm psychically connected to that man, and I know that he's been up to some really bad things. Um, and I can bring all of his bad things to a halt if law enforcement allows it. I don't believe they'll be able to allow it because of his uh, authority and um, wealth. Um, as we know, wealth um, dictates the ability to bring one down um, in the legal system and charge them with high crimes against humanity and children, um, including pedophilia. Um, it's, uh, it's a known situation amongst the lower classes that this type of behavior exists and is uh, allowed to ran romp run rampant um, in our country and of course abroad. Um, uh, sex trafficking is a sick, sick way to uh, gather funds. There's just billions of different ways to gather funds um, and sex trafficking a human <clears throat> is an awful thing to do um, and it's um, awful when it comes down to children who can't um, fight off their offenders and are used in such uh, awful ways. I am not neglectful that I have my own daughter and who is also being stalked on, um, um, through her you know, computer. <clears throat> I'm not allowed to have contact with her. Um, her mom won't allow me to speak to her. her. Her mom's family won't allow me to speak to her. Um, there's no legal, um, legally enforced situation there yet, but it is the situation. It's been that way since uh, beginning of COVID, roughly. <clears throat> I, uh, I'm viewed by others and uh, that have, um, you know, um, decided that they hold authority over me and that they have egos that just dictate towards me instead of allowing me to be a human father with uh, my own authority. Um, and um, anyway, I have the audacity to speak out against predators and <clears throat> I hide out because they do have, uh, you know, obvious ways of finding me and um, I'm under surveillance all the time, um, satellite surveillance, but <clears throat> I do also question why there has n not been a moment where the um, predators have been questioned and had the kids taken out to be questioned. Um, if, if I'm in charge, which I would love to be at some point, to be honest, I could walk right into the room with the kids at first and um, they would know that I'm there for a good with a good energy they would they would uh, be very uh, willing to speak to me and I can come down to their level and I would ask that doctors inspect their private areas for wounds uh, which are very obvious uh, when a young child is being um, used in that kind of way <clears throat> We have um, uh, doctor staff, nurses uh, that are called, um, anyway, they're specific nurses for um, instances of alleged uh, rape. And this is the type of method that needs to be, un uh, unfortunately, deployed at, in this moment um, to guard from John Gabriel Sproul's daughter uh, and maybe youngest, I don't know for sure the youngest, but definitely the oldest, from being um, hurt like this. It is sad, it is scary for me to even have to uh, say these things. The reason I know these things is because I um, had a conversation with John about his early childhood um, experience of being molested. Um, he denied it. He said he was told he was molested by his aunt who was molested by his dad and her dad. Um, his dad is a predator um, and um, de dangerous for those kids to be around. Um, his sister would, uh, is 75. I spoke to her last week, had a long conversation about him. He asked both of his sisters at a young age to be his sex partners. 
one of which did so, the other one didn't. So, there you go. Um, his own brother uh, has acknowledged that it is likely true what's being um, said, and that his dad was a predator, and he, he knows it, and knows very detailed information about it. So this is called generational trauma. And generational trauma reappears in, in families, um, <clears throat> and it definitely happens in the high society families too, once incest is, uh, it's a, it sprouts a thought, it, it believes itself, it's a lie, it believes itself, generation to generation to generation, it becomes a voice, an inner voice, and as we all know, we all have different inner voices that are a problem to us, and I'm a healer, I know how to take down that inner voice, challenge it, tell it it's a freaking liar, tell it, tell, tell it it's, a, it's a beast that doesn't belong here, and that you um, disavow it in the name of in the name of Jesus Christ, you know. Um, there is plant medicines out there. Um, one of which is I ibogaine, um, which is the strongest plant medicine, strongest psychedelic known to man. And and what it does is it resets the receptors in the human brain, and pulls down um, a timeline of life from age say I'm 44. From 44 to zero, I can see it mapped out in front of me, over an eight to ten hour period or so. Of, uh, of 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 the medicine taking place while in a sleep state. I worked in that industry and helped a lot of people off of uh, opioids, alcohol, and other addictions. And we know that addictions stem from uh, PTSD trauma. And uh, PTSD trauma is a marker in your DNA, and it makes you believe that you're sick. Your, your diseases actually do appear uh, uh, because of your own thought patterns. Your thoughts become emotions, and emotions ruin your body, which is why uh, COVID was created, um, to traumatize you and your kids for uh, lifetimes, intentionally, to try to rid us of uh, uh, happiness and the planet that we were given by our Creator to enjoy. Um, it is the belief of many of us that actually God came back telepathically to give people like me the torch to stop generational trauma, which is why I'm speaking out now. Um, I do live uh, my life uh, very um, like a vagrant. <laughs> you would not find me. I don't hold an address. I, I'm in and out of places. I can never be locked down. But meanwhile, I'm helping people everywhere I go. And I uh, do music. I have young men that call me, text me, check in with me, and ask me for help. And I and I'm a mentor. Um, and my music group is spectacular. Um, I'm a better singer than anyone um, out there, and I'm a better music writer. Um, I'm a better speaker, a storyteller. Um, I'm arrogant with mine, and um, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but I love people. But I'm allowed to not give a fuck because they tell me, Joe, don't give a fuck. Just bring in the haters and bring on as many of them towards you as possible. Let them hate, hate, hate. Let them do it. And then write music about why you want to hate on me. So I did, I did songs. One's called Don't Hate. The other one's called Wave and Hate. And you can find my music at Joe, D-R-T-T-H-A, Guru, G-U-R-U, Joe, D-R-T, The Guru, on all platforms. YouTube, check out my music. I just got uh, a single release called Making Love Not Hating, featuring me and my son Lyell, who's a young black man, 22 years old, thinks of me like his like I'm his dad, because his dad passed away at age 40, he, he, he uh, was born on the streets of Baltimore, homeless from age 0 to 10, you know, and lives in a trauma filled house with an 85 year old great aunt, and he, he wants to get out and do his music, and he's beautiful at it. Um, He's got a great story. Our story is like a love story. <laughs> We're bonded for life. Him and me and uh, Real Deal. Also, Real Deal is uh, R-E-A-L-D-Y-L on all platforms. Real Deal 206 on Instagram. He's an MMA fighter. I manage him. We have a song called My Scars that's coming out. And we're going to be on TV performing that. It's about his trauma as a foster kid, abu abuse victim. Um, you know, we're all about... Um, unleashing ourselves from trauma bonding because as relationships start in life this is why I was attached to my ex and how I introduced her to my cousin and how they fell into a 
lustful, uh, stupid thing and really discovered that they both got big problems. And I, I'm away from that. I ain't got no problems. I don't drink. I don't drug. Uh, I smoke a little bit of weed. I, I, unfortunately, I smoke cigarettes right now. I want to help getting off that. So I want to do IB game myself. Um, but anyway, um, back to the message at hand. I love y'all. I really need your assistance. I do need support. Desperately need support until this has uh, come to light. It's Cash App Shake. So dollar sign Shake one two two. You can cash at me. Um, I'm broke, and they came and found me and busted all my windows out of my car. So now I have plastic over the side, and I have I have no funds. People de definitely they just won't lend you money right now. Um, there's a freeze frame in that. So I need donations because I'm working hard to, to to get these girls out of trouble, and I'm doing it out of the goodness of my heart. But I I just need gas. That's it. So if you can give me 100, 200 bucks, I appreciate it. I'm down to my last like fifty dollars right now and I gotta focus on all this shit and they're telling me to go get a job and shit. Really I need to be on YouTube, busting ass on YouTube, but I'm not great at figuring out the tech side and I need a lot of help. Uh it has to do with my 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 brain and how it works. And I don't have to make any excuses for who I am. God put me here for a reason and I'm here to help. And I do this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Get rid of the devil today. Uh, John Gabriel Spruill is the owner of, um, what's it called, Home Pacific Home Source in Puyallup, Washington. You can call them and tell and tell him to fucking go to hell, and that he's a murderer. He, uh, I don't know who he killed, but he he he's wanted for murder, questioning a murder, trying to set me up as the person uh, who might have been involved in that, which is fucking atrocious. Anyone who knows me knows I help people. I don't fucking hurt them. And then I've never come at anyone like that. Um, you know, he's wanted for rape. He's wanted for uh, intentionally giving out HIV AIDS to his community where he does prostitution on the side. Um, you know, I don't really snitch on, on drug dealers. I, I, don't, I don't really do that. Um, but he's involved in all the, all the stuff. And he thinks he's hood. He ain't hood. He's a bitch. He's a bitch made motherfucking bitch. And I'm going to fuck him up. You understand me? I'm going to fuck him up for you guys, for the kids. I'm going to fucking film it and put it out there. Be like, anybody else want some? Bring them on. All your goons. I want them all. I want them all to come for me. Call me a snitch and shit. I want all them motherfuckers. They're like, uh-uh. We don't do that. Hey, fuck you. I live in Everett, Washington. It's a small town. You can find me. Fuck you. Bitch made motherfucker. Anyway, so back to the action. Um, we're going to stop this here, and we're going to go above the local law enforcement into the FBI range. Here's why. Local law enforcement is involved in covering this up. There's a judge that's involved. There's a federal agent that's involved. Um, these are guys that are se uh, sex addicts and, and, and require prostitution to fill their needs, so they came to my ex-wife, and uh, she might have given them HIV, and they're probably pissed at her for it by now. I have no idea, but they created a secret society because um, they found out that I'm very highly clairvoyant and it scares and intimidates the shit out of them because they would know that I know what they're up to energetically. It just fucking comes into me and I'm like, ah, that fuck, why is that here, you know? It sucks. It sucks being a know-it-all, uh, a whistleblower, if you will, but this is me. Uh, <clears throat> I fought Nazis to get out of Paulsville, Washington in the early uh, 90s with my dad and my brother and others. Uh, we infiltrated uh, Nazis that wanted to put up shop in our town. We went to the town hall meeting on uh, Como 4 News. Uh, we had um, violence with them and shit like that. So, you know, it is what it is. This is what I was born for. I'm a fighter. I'm a freedom fighter. I'm a civil, civil rights advocate. I love fucking with racists. <laughs> that's, my, that's my favorite thing to do in the world, man. I love being a race traitor. <laughs> I'm like, oh, if I could die as a race traitor, hang me, bro. Like, come and find me and like, I'm going to get you, Joe Dirt. You goddamn Negro lover. Yeah, I'm going to get you. This is my country. My four, fuck your forefathers. You're fucked. <laughs> You're all fucked. You and your forefathers are fucked. And your kid and your kid's kid. They're all fucked too, so fuck you. But I'm 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 peaceful. I don't mind you passing by me. 
with a middle finger. I'll middle finger you and just tip my hat. We don't need to shoot each other, nothing like that. We just ain't going to have each other for dinner, and I get it. But really, in essence, you guys want to kill guys like me, and I'm here to be a target. I don't mind. Put a target on my chest to write raps about it. Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> Joe DRT, I'm the guru. Seattle knows me. I'm already super famous. And I'm here to fuck you up. B.I.G. Is, is, is in the house. You know, the spirit of Tupac is here. The spirit of Nipsey Hussle is here. The spirit of, the spirit of Dr. Sabi is back. Um, if anybody knows how those people ended up, where they ended up, it's, it's, it's no lies how, how they want the good guys to be dead. So, here I am, the good guys. And I'm better at rapping and singing than anybody you know. Period. You're going to love my shit. Fuck you, I'm out. I love you.